guys, Michael Bream here with EV West and today we got a treat for you. We have a 1967 Austin Mini Moak. This car is a cult classic. British Motor Company designed this car in the late 50s and went into production in the 60s. And if you can believe it, they actually wanted to make this thing into an army vehicle. They took it out and uh, apparently low sided the thing several times. It had really low ground clearance and uh, they quickly made the decision to cancel the project and turn it into a civilian vehicle. And uh, this is what we're left with. Uh, they've made these, uh, they made them for about 10 years in the UK. They shifted production over to Australia, made them up until about 1981 in Australia, and then actually took production to Portugal where it eventually ceased production in 1993. There's still a ton of these around. They're extremely popular in resort destinations uh, all over the Caribbean and I mean, essentially all over the world. Uh, this one, um, like most of them, was painfully underpowered, had a little 800cc motor in it. So we did what we do best here at EV West. We put an electric motor in it, just full of torque, uh, just tons of power up the hills. Uh, you can just about spin the tires anywhere you want. And uh, we're gonna take you for a little ride. We're gonna show you the motor and just kind of give you a quick overview of what we did to this uh, fine little vehicle we got here. Uh, let's check it out. Okay, so here's a quick overview of our motor compartment. Up front here, we have a little 10 cell pack. We have another 24 in the rear for a total of 34 cells. 11 kilowatt hours of energy, so it'll take this customer about 40 to 50 miles. Of course, we got the Curtis 1238 7601, wonderful controller, probably a little bit too much power for this, but too much power is not really in our vocabulary, so we'll just ignore that. We got our water cooling kit over here, a little radiator down here, and of course we went direct drive in this, so we have a Graziano 10 to 1 differential reduction gear up front. We custom fabricated our own axles for it, so we use the Mini Moak on the outsides and the Graziano on the inside. Uh, gives the customer the ability to change the differential. If this one wears out, we do have to use used parts for some of these vehicles, so it's always nice to be nice universal fit. And that's it, we cleaned up some of the stuff. We took out the hydraulic reservoir for the uh, clutch that was previously in here and um, just really simplified the engine compartment, made it a lot easier to get around in here. Uh, that's it for it up front. We'll, we'll go check out the back. Okay, so here we are at the back of the vehicle and we got a nice little battery pack back here. 24 cells of 100 amp hours. Uh, puts a little bit of weight in the back of the vehicle. Helps balance the car a little bit better, which is kind of nice. And doesn't take up too much room and it's nice and waterproof, so we're not going to have any issues with that. Like I said, there's not too much to see back here, but just wanted to kind of show you where the rest of the batteries are. And that's essentially it for components in the vehicle. Everything else is nice and tucked away. All right, just the final thing here before we go and take it for a ride and have some fun. This is our charge port. It's formerly where the uh, gas tank was before, and we really like to take advantage of stuff that's existing on the car. So of course, inside here, we put our little plug for the customer to go ahead and charge it up. And then underneath where the gas tank formerly was, we have our charger and our contactor boxes. So a lot of the, a lot of the electronics are uh, nice and tucked away and hidden uh, out of sight where they should be. Well, there's all the components, so let's go take a quick ride. So the great thing is I'm just going to turn this thing on and give it gas and we're going to go for a ride. Turn the key, put it in forward, e-brake, we'll see you in a little bit. I almost can't think of a better car for a conversion. Nice open top car, you know, you're exposed to the elements and you hear every little noise around you. So it's especially nice to have a car like this where you don't have a lot of exhaust noise. Uh, and of course the smell because the air is just kind of all around you. So uh, I think I need to personally deliver this car down to the Caribbean and uh, make sure it does okay. One of the best things about these are just the acceleration. This thing is, uh, for a moke, it's just blistering fast. I mean, it just goes uh, at just about any time. You can spin the wheels. I mean, just incredible. Lots of torque, very light, it feels very nimble. It's got a real nice low center of gravity in it. And uh, I just I just want to keep putting miles on this car. I just absolutely love it. It's got a nice little horn too. It's been the, uh, the joke of the shop, everybody. Everybody's got to honk the horn. Oh! Yep. It's a mini moke for you. So another neat thing is we can program this for just about any power level. 
So before we deliver it to the customer, we'll actually give him a couple different power levels so he can drive it much more mellow. He doesn't have to worry about spinning tires or any of that stuff. And we'll actually give him a really high regen rate so it'll be nice and easy to stop the vehicle going down really steep hills. Some of these older vehicles don't have the best brakes in the world. They usually have drums instead of discs. And so it's nice to have the added benefit of the uh, regeneration from the motor. I'm gonna go ahead and demonstrate that for you. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna accelerate a little bit here. We'll bring it up to about 30 and then I'm just gonna let off the gas and don't apply any brake. And you can actually see how quickly this decelerates. So I'm doing about 35. I'm gonna let off the gas and look at that. It just comes right down to a stop. No braking whatsoever. So with a little bit of additional brake pedal, you're gonna have excellent stopping distance in this thing. People love the Moke. Wow, what a blast. Man, I tell you, uh, I just, every, every car we get into, they're just so much fun. These little old cars, I think we owe it to basically all the classic cars to convert them and just keep them on the road. And uh, uh, really it's all about just the fun of driving. If you can keep a car super fun to drive, uh, I think they'll stay on the road for literally decades to come. Uh, that about wraps it up for us today. I'm Michael Breen with EV West and uh, Give us a call, give us an email, share, share your story, tell us what classic car you'd convert because uh, there's plenty of classics out there and uh, we want to convert them. We'll see you next time. Hi, this is Michael Breen with EV West, and today we got a quick tip for you. We get a lot of inquiries from our customers asking uh, little questions on how to make the installation easier, so we're going to start a little series and share some tips with you. Today we want to talk about twisted pair or twisted pair wiring. This is a technique that, believe it or not, was discovered by Alexander Graham Bell, like way back in the day, and he discovered that you can cancel out electromagnetic interference by twisting two pairs of wire together. And uh, we use this type of wiring for uh, measuring the current across the shunt in our state of charge meters. So what I wanted to do today is just show you a really quick method of creating twisted pair wire for yourself. And uh, this is the type of stuff that you see, you even find it uh, as factory wiring in vehicles. And walk a little closer so you can see it. It's nice, nice braided wire. Uh, it gives you a real nice look. So if you're installing our Link Pro or uh, Xantrax, anything connected to a shunt, we recommend this type of wiring be used on all shunt applications. So what we do is we just measure out the course of the wire that we need. We add about 20-25% to that length because when you twist the wire, it's going to shorten it up. So you're going to go ahead, cut two pairs of wire. We use you know 18 gauge wire on most of this stuff and just go ahead and cut equal lengths take your two pieces and put them in a vise. I'm just gonna use our mill vise because it's right here and it's nice and easy. So I'm just gonna stick this in the end here and clamp it down. I'm gonna stretch this out. I'm just gonna use a cordless drill. You could use a corded one, either way. Get your two strips and we're just gonna put it in the chuck. I'm gonna hold it with my hand and tighten it down. Now when I go ahead and tighten this, I wanna put constant pressure on this. If I do it loose like this, it'll get all tangled up. We don't want that. So I'm going to pull back, put a little bit of constant pressure on it, and twist it up. Once it becomes nice and tight, I'm going to run it a little bit further and then back it off all while maintaining pressure on the drill. And what that does is it kind of sets it so it doesn't want to unravel. Go a little bit further, 
pull back, put it in reverse, loosen it a little, and then undo the, the chuck. And there we have our twisted pair, and you're going to have a nice clean signal for your current sensor that comes off of your shunt. I hope that saves you a couple uh, minutes in your installation. And uh, for EV West, today's quick tip, this is Michael Bream, and we'll see you next time. Thanks.